Okay, you're on a career break. Planning to relaunch a career, fantastic. I see students, I see women on a break. Greetings from rainy Mumbai. It's actually at a halt right now. I agree, it has been raining and pouring. Okay, Puna, Divya, fantastic. Vanilla, Pragya, all. Good to see all. Preeti, Shivangi there, I just saw her name. I don't see her as of now. I think she has got locked off. Okay. How many of you, do you have a resume already? Ah, yeah, I'm sure. making one. Okay. Fantastic. I see plenty of yeses. Okay. All right. Hi, Shivangi. Welcome. Hi. Long time no see. Lovely to see you. <laughs> yeah, lovely to see you. I think the last time we spoke was on one of these calls, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think it was one of... No, we met outside. I think we met at your office, right? We did meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did meet. Then you moved out. But you've been doing some fantastic work on LinkedIn. I've been following you for a while, a lot around the CVs. So it's just the perfect time. I think over to you, Vipal. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vibha Manohar, and I work at Aspire for her as operations manager. I welcome you all for the first session of our job readiness series, Mastering the Art of Resume Building. I'm sure you all know the importance of a good resume. Uh, but we don't want our resume to just be good, right? Uh, we want it to be perfect. We want it to stand out so that it will help us achieve that dream job. So that's exactly why we are, what we are going to learn from this session, uh, how to build a powerful resume. I would like to mention a few housekeeping rules. Uh, please let us know that you are here by participating in the poll questions, which will be shared in a while. You may wish to please take down a few notes, so keep a pen and paper handy. We are all uh, joining in virtually, so kindly bear with us if there are any connectivity issues. Kindly keep yourself on mute unless we ask you to unmute yourself. Please stay with us till the end uh, to get your questions answered because the questions will be taken up in the end. And if you have any questions during the session, you can please use the chat box. I would now like to invite Ruchita Tandon, Head Partnership and Alliances at Aspire for Her. Hi, everyone. Good evening. How's the energy today? I know it's midweek, it's Wednesday, but we are absolutely delighted to see so many of you joining us virtually today. Okay, are you all excited for today's session? So let me share a few updates. Uh, as you all know, it's been three years that we have been existent at Aspire for Her. We have a big mission and vision of getting 1 million women in the workforce by 2025. We've been trying a lot to make more and more students, uh, get them employability skills, and we are trying to see that we can place 1 million women in the workforce by 2025. Almost after three years, we have reached that stage today where we finally are going to come up with a job fair for students. We, as you all are aware, are running digital programs, and we hope that the entire a uh, student community of ours is getting upskilled. We are trying to get jobs at the other end and try to match your skill sets along with those of the corporates and get uh, all the most of the uh, women as well as the other students into the workforce. We really hope that with this career fair, sorry, uh, my apologies for this, with this career fair, this is going to be possible. This is the first career fair that we are going to be holding by mid of October. If you still haven't upskilled yourself through any of the digital skilling uh, sessions, please follow us on social media and know when we have the next session. Besides that, 
for all the women on a career break, we are also happy to announce that there is going to be another uh, job fair for women on a career break. It is going to be sometime in September. But for all the details, kindly follow us on social media. The job readiness series is definitely planned to help you build your soft skills that are needed along with the technical skills. Uh, you, we have a very, very a vibrant team who will engage with you. But for anything, please follow us on social media so that you don't miss any of the sessions and you find the right opportunities to come and be a part of the job fair. We have very interesting speakers lined up for the entire month. Please make use of this. Uh, with this, I'd like to also welcome our guest for today, Shivangi. But before I welcome Shivangi, this is over to Vibha to, uh, uh, to take it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ruchita, ma'am. We also have amongst us Amit Mehta, Head of Business Development, Education and Training at Amazon. Welcome, Amit. Hey, thank you. And thank you to the Aspire for Her team. And thank you for all uh, of those who have joined today. Uh, so, you know, as, as you know, we've at AWS, our focus is to increase the participation of women in the, uh, you know, tech force. And that's primarily because uh, India is really at that point where the supply and talent demand for digital skills, there's a gap. And to be honest, there's never a, there's never a, been a better time for uh, people who want to get into digital careers. So uh, clearly from our side, I just wanted to give you a perspective. Our focus is uh, for, for the workforce, uh, it's really about upskilling existing workforce. So for those of you uh, who have had careers in IT but are in a, on a break and coming back, clearly an opportunity for you to upskill yourself. For students, clearly an opportunity to uh, you know embrace the skills which are required by the industry now and become more relevant. So that's, that's the whole promise of uh, education to employability. And uh, women and tech for horrors really are attempt at uh, at least you know our goal for this year uh, or let's say, next, let's say next 15 months is really to get about 25,000 women uh, trained and certified on AWS. Uh, just to give you a perspective, for those of you who are new, uh, your resume is like an invitation card or an entry ticket to the party. Now, uh, that is what gets you in, uh, at least from a contention perspective. Now, uh, for those of you who have spent some time in the industry, you would know that a resume is necessarily not what gets you a job. It's really your reference and your uh, your network of colleagues and friends who will get your resume ahead of the queue for all others. So for those of you who are new, for students, clearly, uh, you know, as, as an executive who's been in the industry for 30 years, uh, when we look at recruiting people, uh, for those of you who have no background and coming fresh, clearly what we are looking at is what skills you have acquired. Uh, obviously, your college, college degree matters, your GPAs matter, but what really matters is have you have you really taken the time to learn stuff? So it's a, at Amazon, we have a skill called learn and be curious. And we look for that skill or that attitude by the learner or the interviewee, whether he's exhibited that skill, whether he's really learned something proactively and whether he has a body of, or, or he has a promise that he'll actually come into uh, the industry and start delivering as soon as possible. So that's for, that's for people who are fresh. For people who are, uh, who are, uh, you know, skilled, clearly what we're looking for is a body of work and a crisp body of work, which says, this is what, this is what the job description was. This is how you've delivered against the role. And this is the impact that you've created. And while I'm no talent acquisition expert, but I tell you, you know, long resumes, which have, uh, which have been written by someone else, uh, we can see that through and, you know, that doesn't necessarily pass through uh, the check. Uh, so one one request to you is you are the best editor uh, and writer of your resumes. Don't give it to a third party agency because they're not close to the body of work that you have delivered and the kind of insights you can provide, they can't. So take your time and make that crisp, make that sharp. But that's really the entry point and that's the invitation ticket, right? But what happens after, the, after that uh, clearly is what matters most. And in interviews, what we're looking for is Candidates who do uh, who do respond to questions in a star format, which means what was the situation they faced, what was the task at hand, what action they took, and what was the result they delivered. The more they can anchor themselves to that kind of a talk track, 
the more it gives us uh, you know evidence that this candidate really can demonstrate what is written on the resume so in the interview what really matters is whether your your talk matches to what you have written in the resume and uh, and a and a person who's really expert at interviewing will will kind of you know for the first three or four filtering questions he will know whether you are yes, faking yes. it or whether you are uh, really uh, the real deal so i would say you know the uh, the session later i'm sure shivanga is going to talk about it so clearly very critical to have that sharp concise focused resume um uh, and uh, and then obviously what matters is uh, your ability to demonstrate success and your ability to demonstrate that you're really doing this so clearly uh, as a closing end uh, you know i think what matters is take the time over the next couple of weeks to go th through these different sessions and then uh, our our promise of employ education to employability uh, is what we are looking to deliver our goal of 25000 women in in tech careers in cloud careers in 15 months time so thank you aspire for her for your partnership and thank you for joining today uh, we are there to hold your hand it really matters how much you want to take up this challenge how you want to commit to yourself uh, and invest in yourself so all the best on the journey and uh, you can count on us as the as the leading provider of cloud services in the market thank you thank you so much amit for being here and for your thoughts uh, I would now uh, request Farisha to please share the uh, first set of poll questions. I request all to please participate in the poll. I see that most of you have participated. Have you in the past or will in the future consider hiring a professional resume writing service? So 67% have said no. That's good. What is the best format for resume? 74% have said PDF and 25% have said word. Thank you so much everyone for participating. Now let me introduce you to our speaker for the evening, Ms. Shivangi Raghuvanshi. With a proven track record of success, partnering with some of the most innovative organizations in our industry, Shivangi Raghuvanshi's career has been defined by a relentless pursuit of impact. Shivangi is the global head of resourcing and talent deployment for retail business at Standard Chartered Bank based out of Singapore. As a certified ICF coach, she is passionate about coaching, volunteering her time to coach internally within Standard Chartered Bank and with Growth Space, a coaching and mentoring services startup. Welcome, Shivangi. Over to you. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. Um, I must, uh, before I start the, the conversation, I would like to call it as a conversation. I do want to share, uh, I think, uh, kudos to AWS for doing this. Uh, what a fantastic initiative. And kudos to Aspire for her for really moving the needle on bringing more women in the workforce. Um, so well done. And I'm really grateful to be here and uh, play my role in being able to contribute to the journey. So thank you for inviting me for starters. I am truly, truly, I was looking forward to that session and uh, I, I must admit that uh, I was nervous before coming here. 
And uh, that's the nervousness that each one of us feels, right? That's the nervousness that you feel each time you apply for a job, uh, each time you go for an interview, each time you even come and present. And I see 330 participants. So I am incredibly nervous right now. So if you see me laughing a lot, that's me just being very, very, very nervous. Um, so let's, uh, I, I will start with a presentation. Um, you know, please keep adding your thoughts in the chats. Let's keep the discussion going. Wherever required, I would request one of the moderators to pe please cue me in when I need to step in, answer something and let it be a discussion. Um, the conversation won't end here because you can easily find me on LinkedIn. Um, and, uh, you know, you can connect with me there and I will always respond to any questions that come my way. So with that said, let's just start our agenda for the day. And uh, one of you just let me know when you can see the presentation screen. We can see it, Shivangi. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. I do also want to uh, share that my daughter is in the background, so you might hear a little bit of uh, kid playing in the background voice as well. Okay. Um, all right. So it's visible because now I can't see anyone. I can only see the PPT. So please, you'll have to cue me in wherever I need to stop. Uh, good to go. Uh, just let me know to audio. Yes. Okay. All right. So how to create an impressive resume or how to create a powerful resume, right? So, well, how to create a resume that gets you through the door or at least gets you shortlisted for an interview. So that's really the topic of our discussion today. And I noticed a lot of uh, our participants today are women who've been on career break. And for them, this is one of the first places to start even for a lot of freshers or for anybody looking for a job, this is really the first place to start a resume. So why is it important? Because your resume is the first impression you make. That's why it's very, very important that you get this right. If you don't spend the time and effort in your resume, Please do not expect the recruiter or the hiring manager or the organization to give you that benefit and shortlist you if, if they don't see that effort or that clarity coming through the resume. So take time, give it ample amount of time and attention because it's the first impression you make. But also resume has its limitations because it will not land you the job, but it can surely get you inside the door, at least an interview, which is huge because if you look at the thousands of applicants that we get for the job, being able to get selected for an interview is an achievement in itself. And that can only happen when you have a good resume that'll help you get through the door. Okay, I'm gonna give an insider tip as someone who's in resourcing. Most job application platforms, where when you apply for a job, your, your resume goes through a job application platform. The, the platform will automatically prioritize resumes that include keywords from the job description of the role you've applied for and are well formatted and presented, of course. So if any one of you think that the resume is being viewed by a recruiter, well, there are, there are recruiters who view resumes and there is also a technology now which views the resumes on behalf of the recruiters. And the technology works in this way, where they will search for keywords, they will search for proper organization of resume format, and they will prioritize those that meet the criteria. This is where I want some of you, uh, I want all of you actually to put it in the chat 
uh, what is the ideal length of a resume according to you is it one page max two pages three pages or it doesn't matter it can be as long as we want so two page okay any uh, and and please let the everybody on the chat 300 plus people just mention to me how what do you think is the ideal length of resume keep adding it and i um, i'll wait the moderator for, to give me a sense of the trend most of them are replying one or two one or two okay yeah some of them so are replying a, as three okay but most of them are one or two anybody beyond three no we like a anybody for doesn't matter Okay, so uh, one to please mute, um, mute yourself. Please use the chat box for your reply. All right. So, people at the call who have three pages received me. uh well you've got work to do you've got to condense it okay because the ideal length of your resume is one page and max two pages anything beyond two pages is definitely not ideal and you may wonder but i have so much to share i have so much to do i have nothing more to say to you than my next slide Elon Musk has a one page resume. And I'm not necessarily a big fan of Elon Musk, but we all agree that he's got a lot of achievements to share and he's got a one page resume. So I know we can all do it. We can create an ideal one page resume that is sharp and that really helps us get an interview, get that interview call. <clears throat> Okay, moving on. I know Amit uh, from AWS earlier mentioned that spend time in creating your own resume and do not outsource it to agencies or any resume writing services. I fully agree with that. But what we have today is a lot of help, which didn't exist even two years back. I would say even a year and a half year back. all of you would have heard of chat gpt if not please that's like your first assignment even before creating a resume go and understand what chat gpt is <clears throat> it's based it's it's a technology called generative ai and generative ai based technology there are a lot of apps that use this technology and there are a lot of apps that can help you create your resume so you have the content they will polish the content for you they will polish the format for you and they can help you create the resume they won't necessarily create the resume completely for you well they can do that but uh, it would be a very generic not a very impressive one uh, you can take help from some of these apps to create that impressive resume canva writeio dot io a few examples there are many i'm not particularly <clears throat> you know uh, asking you to or or recommending a preference here these are just the few that i know i'm sure there are a lot more there are probably better than these uh, i'm just giving you examples that this technology already exists and it's flourishing so please use it because some of it may be available to all of us for free So I just want to take a pause here. Are there any questions so far? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, should we move on then? Because my next slide will now talk about specific tips that you need to keep in mind when you're creating your resume. Uh, ma'am, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, would the uh. HR prefer originality, or would they prefer Canva or Writer? 
like the generative AI templates or would they prefer originality? Would they prefer originality? Okay. All right. What would you prefer if you were a recruiter? And can I get your name? Uh, hi, I'm sorry. My name is Jamana. Okay. Jamana. Uh, yes, Jamana. Yeah. Hi, Jamana. Um, yes. So uh, what would you prefer, Jamana, if you were hiding someone? Everyone, everyone. Okay. Templates are available. For, uh, for example, I have used Canva uh, and I've used templates which are similar to when, I, when I'm, in, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in college right now. And okay. then if we have uh, uh, we have these uh, uh, mock interviews where people are asked to get their interviews, uh, uh, their resumes. And I noticed that a few of us had a similar resume. It okay. was, I mean, the template was similar. So w would a HR be able to catch it? They have you already used this template or is it like... Um, that's that's the question okay okay uh, great question uh, and thank you for asking that jamana because let me clarify something but as i assume jamana you become a recruiter in future and you get like hundreds of resumes all are exactly the same do you prefer that happening to you when you're hiding for a role the chances are quite high <laughs> So now when everybody has access to this technology and everybody using it, then it really isn't a differentiator. It's not going to set you apart in the crowd. And the reason we are having this conversation today is how do you set apart, set yourself apart in the crowd? Any technology you can use to aid your originality, right? But this technology cannot replace your originality. And that's why I said what Amit said when we when he was talking about that do not outsource your resume. That's very important. Do not use a, do not ask an application to create your resume for you. Use it to help you refine it. Use it to make it look better or just make the language sound more polished and sophisticated or to just proofread it. Right? So that's what you can do. But if you're going to use it to just create a resume completely on your behalf, well, then everybody has access to this technology and it's free. It's not going to help you much. So everybody out there, Generative AI, Canva, these apps are just to help you create a resume. A good looking, a well polished, well formatted, sophisticated, professionally sounding resume. But the words, the content are yours. So do not replace that originality for anything else. So Jamana, does I does this answer your question? Yes, yes, it does. Thank you so much. I would any day prefer a simple resume which is original than one of those fancy looking Canva templates which has no originality. And I'm, I'm sure every recruiter so out there would do that. And please, and I, and I want to clarify again for anybody who thinks I'm recommending yeah. generative AI to create resumes. No, I'm not. I'm saying use help because there's tons of helps available, right? So, but but put in the effort. You will still have to put in the effort, even if you use these canvas of the world. So moving on, uh, and this will also clarify why we need to do all the work. And what is the work that is required to be done? Now, each time you apply for a job, I would recommend that you tailor your resume for every job you apply to. Which means, yes, that every time you apply for a job, have a separate resume. And you may wonder, what if I'm applying to 50 jobs in a day? Uh, well, if you're applying to 50 jobs in a day, how many of those jobs are different? Create resumes for those different jobs. If you're applying for the same sales job or a same recruiter job or a same cloud engineer job, you need the same profile that you can apply. But if you're applying for a UX designer or if you're applying for a cloud engineer, then make sure that you have different resumes for those two jobs. 
what I do, and I strongly recommend everybody to do, is have a master resume, which can be which can be 10, 20, 100 pages long. Mama. And refer to the job description of every role you apply to and tailor a relevant resume. So use keywords, use uh, use a language that is there in the job description, but do not lie, do not fake it. Use that language which is also applicable to your experience. Why do this? If you're wondering, why do this? Then the answer here is, As I said, there's a lot of tech being used today in recruitment. Um, and this tech filters out resumes, as I was saying earlier, which has the keywords and are well formatted. So if you create a resume which has some relevant keywords from the job that you've applied for, you increase your chances to be shortlisted. But make sure that you're not lying or you're not exaggerating on the resume. That will definitely work against you. In some companies, they have a tendency of even blacklisting profiles. So do not lie on the resume. Make sure your the language resonates with the experience that you have, or even the skills that you have. For freshers out there, make sure that you highlight your skills, your educational experiences, the projects that you've done. Uh, everything that you've done in your entire life from schooling till your graduation, post-graduation, all of that needs to come out, but that has to be real, relevant, and it has to be very smartly captured. And the smart way to capture it is to try and use similar language. So this is a pro tip adding keywords from the job description while writing your resume. Any questions before I move on to the next slide? Yeah, actually, Shivangi, there are a few questions. Uh, yeah, I'll take them now. Yeah, Divya and Sonali have asked how to include the career gap in the resume. Okay. How, How to include the career? Okay. Yeah, career gap. Call it out that you have a gap in your career and why that gap exists. Call it out that you took a gap because you were probably caring for an adult or caring for your own self or you took a sabbatical. Uh, you don't need to explain why you took a career gap. If you're comfortable, do it. If not, just take, just say it's a career break. And, uh, you know, the reality is that you might face bias. There will be recruiters, organizations who will screen you out because you have a career gap. But then there are also a lot of organizations that will not screen you out because of your career gap, irrespective of your career gap. Right? So... AWS, for example, obviously the fact that they're sponsoring and working with Aspire for her is one such example. Standard Chartered also, we hire a lot of women who've been on career gap, uh, who have a career gap. I would say, do not shy away from it. I would say, do not uh, hide it or don't be even um, embarrassed about it. Just put it there that you have a career gap. Any any other questions? And does that answer the question? Yes, yes, it does. Ma'am, I have a question. This is Namrata hmm? from Pune. Hi, Namrata. Hi, ma'am. I have a 12 years of gap. Previously, I was mm -hmm. working as a .NET developer. Right now, I am mm -hmm. upskilling myself with uh, software testing selenium so mm -hmm. my uh, i have faced an interview and they asked why do you want to switch from uh, a developer to tester and i was like i didn't have any answer for that 
because I technology has switched from a hmm. technology has advanced a lot. I was working twelve years back to up uh, just to get into workforce. I am learning something which I am able to. That was the fact, but I was not able to explain. Is it okay to explain the same thing But, to me? Yeah, it's of course it's you know uh, it's obviously important to be authentic. But it's also important to work hard on your resume or even on your interview. Um, I'm conscious that you have separate uh, session coming up on interviewing skills, so I won't spend too long here. But to be honest, you can say you can say the same thing in a lot uh, in a way that may impress the impress the recruiter or the hiring manager. Okay, and uh, because I haven't put the same thing on my resume that I'm learning something new, should I put it on my resume as well? Of course. you must put it because that shows initiative that shows that you are very serious about entering the workforce board in the club and you are taking efforts to uh, you know. uh, can i request the participants to be on mute and uh, secondly shivangi just you know so that we for the benefit of all if we can first finish with the session and then take up the questions because uh, we have a huge community who's waiting to get answered so we'll request it okay thank you thank you so much okay so we'll come back to the questions then um i will move on to my next slide okay so what do you do in your resume uh how do you write the resume now that's a big one right what is the kind of language that you use so use active language right tell them more about what you have done or are doing as against your capabilities tell them about the projects you've led tell them that you've collaborated led it took initiated use active language use action words and not words like excellent at this up you know up skill like that don't just list down your capabilities list down on what you've done where have you applied those that's why i'm saying use active language use action oriented language and we'll come and and there is a lot of material out there that'll help you on how do you apply this focus on outcomes and results achieve very important uh we come across a lot of resumes where uh, you know we may see that it's just a list of um capabilities it's just that one can project manage one can do excel one can do ppt but where have you applied all those skills to right did you lead any initiative did you did you um as a ux designer did you research a product to finally landing it for example so those specific examples what were the results out of those <laughs> the the next point is proofread edit for errors the irony of this point is that i did not proofread my own ppt for errors because i have misspelled achieved in the second bullet so but please don't make the mistake i have made here always proofread for errors for spelling errors for any kind of grammatical errors always proofread your resume for errors and the last one 75% of you think pdf wrong answer always save your resume in dot in a word doc format because all technology out there can only read doc formats if you uh, i i tested uh, a pdf uh, resume of mine and how much information it was able to pull out it was just 6% of the information that i had listed that was being pulled out in a pdf form Right. And with that this was my last slide. Uh I'm going to stop sharing and I also want to share that uh, I may not be uh, just for a sec. Let me first stop uh, stop sharing. Uh go back to the Okay. Um I you hope you can't sharing. see my no, we can't see. Thank you.
Okay, I'll take questions. Uh, I'm conscious I won't be able to wait for too long because my daughter has a viral fever, so she's very cranky. Uh, so please don't mind. Uh, and I'm sure none of you will mind because we're all, uh, you know, fairly understanding of, it's a reality, right, that all of us deal with. Uh, so Shivangi, one question is that how important is a cover letter and should we include a cover letter? Cover letters, uh, well, you can include it, but they're not mandatory. And uh, at least in, in India market, we don't really read a lot of cover letters. So I would say if, if you can skip it. Okay. I have never used a cover letter in my life, so. Yeah. I, but I know there are some organizations that like a cover letter, especially organization in the public sector, public sector space, uh, your government organizations or organizations like UNICEF, United Nations, they really want a, they really like a cover letter because they, uh, especially if you apply for the United Nations, UNICEF and these kind of organizations, they want to know what is your purpose? What is your goal in life? And that can come out very easily in a cover letter. So that's where you, you can use a cover letter there, but not for not otherwise, not for every job. Uh, another question is that, what is a master resume? Okay, a master resume is a word coined by me. So I have a resume that runs into many pages. And every time if I have to apply for a job, I kind of, you know, pick and choose parts of the resume that I want to highlight, which is relevant for the job I'm applying to. That is, uh, if, uh, so I have done different roles in my career. So when I apply for different roles, I want to make sure that the right role gets high, the right experience and skills get highlighted and it doesn't get lost in all the, it doesn't get lost in me sharing a big, big, big theory on my experience. So that's why I create a master resume, which is only for my personal use. I don't share it with anybody. I just pick and choose experiences from there that I want to highlight to the recruiter or to the employer. I think we have just one more question, uh, Shivangi. Uh, how... Um, is there a specific template uh, while writing a resume? There's no one template. There are many templates. And uh, I have shared some links with uh, Preeti, who can share those links in the chat. I'm sharing um, them there are What I've uh, shared is a Harvard University recommended or a Harvard Business School recommended resume template that all of you can, uh, it's available for free. So you can download that template and start using it. But there's no one template. So it can be whatever, you can create your own template. If you're creative, create your own template. But please do it in a Word doc format. And uh, Deepti wants to know that, do we need to add a photo in the resume? Uh, no, you do not need to add a photo in the resume. A lot of organizations uh, do not want a photo to be added in the resume simply because uh, you know, it, could, it could create bias. It could, uh, sorry, I, uh, you know, I probably have a few more minutes and then I'll have to log off uh, to take care of my daughter. But uh, as I was saying that uh, hello hello can you please mute yourself uh, ma'am ne wahi bola ki ma'am ne principal mein hai wo bar bar welfare ka requesting everyone to please mute yourself
Okay, Shivangi, you have to unmute yourself. Thanks. Yes, so what's the next question? Uh, Soumya is asking, can we get a sample format of uh, one page? Yes, I'm not interested in that. Because it's not in the group, it's not in the group. Uh, Shivangi, you need to Shivangi. Shivangi or unmute. Okay, okay. So I'm saying that the temp the link that I've shared with Preeti over there, you will find resume templates which also has content added into it. So you can now. Uh, you know, you ready, you know, ready. You know, you know, uh, I'll take one last question. Handle. और प्लस उस उस वो जो पेरेंट है वो बोले कि मेरा बच्चा इस काबिल है नो आलीज रिमूव दैट कैन पर्सन फ्रॉम द मीटिंग अदरवाइज या आह आलीज रिमूव दैट पर्सन फ्रॉम द मीटिंग अदरवाइज 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 आलीज रिमूव दैट पर्सन फ्रॉम द मीटिंग yeah once you finish the course be it on um and you have a certificate of completion or even if it's just a youtube uh, completion just add it in the resume that you have completed these courses and where you where you completed those if you have a e certificate you can add the link uh, but look, uh, you know, you do have to make sure that you've actually done that course, because if you add something which you're not confident about, I would recommend don't add that. Because if you get questioned and you don't know how to answer, that will definitely immediately, you know, uh, will ruin your chances of getting that job. Uh, but if you're taking your courses by yourself on Google, on YouTube, I, why not? Please do add that. People are taking courses online on various uh, websites and a lot of that are free today. So educations become available to everyone and uh, don't hesitate in adding that. Thank you so much, Shivangi. So yeah, I really have to go because I have to now take care of my daughter. Yeah. She is not well, uh, but this was really, really, uh, I hope I was, I was able to do justice to the uh, conversation. I know yes. this is not all. There is loads that you still need to learn. And there are links that will help you. If there are most questions, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I go by the same name, Shivangi Raghuvanshi. And uh, thank you so much, Aspire, for, for having yeah. me today. Thank you, Shivangi. That was a very informative session. And I'm sure after listening to you, everyone here are inspired to build their perfect resume. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would I would like to again uh, tell all the participants to please attend uh, all the sessions of the job readiness series, uh, including the uh, AWS Discovery Day by Amazon. Uh, all who participate in the AWS session will be getting a certificate and badge, and uh, this will help you to qualify for our upcoming job fair in October. So make sure that you attend all the sessions. The links have been shared in the chat box. So we'll see you soon. Thank you once again. Have a great evening. Where can we get all recordings, please? The recordings will be shared or it will be sent to your email. Great. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, 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 thank you so much. So, thank you. you all to please uh, uh, participate in one last poll. Oh. Oh. Can you please yeah, share? Yeah, I'm sure. Poll? Thank you so much, ma'am. Next Wednesday, you, there is a session by on LinkedIn. You, ma'am. Please make sure that you are there. I request everyone to participate in this last poll. Yeah, done, ma'am. Thank you, Aspire, for her for arranging such a beautiful session. Can't access the poll, ma'am. Uh, how to get to it?
you should be able to see it on your screen. Uh, Preeti, please do share the links I had shared with you. Um, it's not visible. Yes, Shivangi, I have shared it. We'll share it with the recording to everybody who's been a part of, uh, who's registered for the sessions. Unable to participate in the poll, I'm getting it as poll is in progress. Would you mind to read? Uh, please, please go down. There's a more option if you slide uh, towards the right. And from there, uh, you have the option for uh, getting into the poll. Uh, Richita, I'll take your leave now. Thank you. Sure, sure, Shivangi. Thank you so much. And please take care. Uh, thank you so much for still being here with us in spite of having uh, to look after your daughter. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. Shivangi. Thank you. My thank pleasure. Thank you. you. Okay, no worries if the poll is not visible. Thank you so much for joining in and see you all next Wednesday, the entire month, every Wednesday, you will find a session on job readiness. Make the most of it. Follow us. See the chat. Thank you so much, everyone.